You have no friends. Everything you say is met with some kind of silence or dismissal and you feel like you just drive everybody away from you. This is the voice that goes on in your head all the time. And it's so hard to live with that feeling until one day somebody comes up to you and says, Hey, I was watching this video on ADHD the other day and it sounds just like you. Me, but I'm not a little boy who's nicknamed the spawn of Satan. I am a friendless overachiever with deep feelings of self-loathing. But then you really start to look into it and you discover anyone can have ADHD. I'm Fifi Rabs and I realised why I have these intense emotions around rejection and failing to maintain friendships. I went to Durham recently to visit some of my friends who go to university there and it really prompted me to think about how ADHD affects my friendships. You've seen the title of this video so you know that I don't think that's your fault. We do be living in a society though and the expectations on friendships don't always align with the things that we really struggle with as people with ADHD. To be candid with you, I'm going to call you out. It's going to be very uncomfortable for both of us and then I'm going to give you the solutions that no one ever bothered to teach you. I've also timestamped everything below because I know that all of our attention spans haven't quite reached the 10 minute mark yet but if you wanted to watch everything even the bits that you don't think are relevant, there could be some gold in there for you. Don't worry though, I have something nice for you at the end, because I'm not a bully, I just sound like one. Are you ready? Are you ready, kids? Aye aye, Captain! Because first, we're going to talk about the fact that you are consistently late. I'm going to tread lightly here because it's actually a bit triggering for me to talk about my own punctuality, but it's very important, so I'm doing it for you guys. We're going to get it out the way. Time blindness can really stop us from being reliable and even make us look like bad friends. Okay, I have 20 minutes until I need to be there. Two hours later. Deeply roots in racism. Greek life was oh fuck. My solution is a watch. It has to be digital. It has to be waterproof. This is mine. It has seen the walls it's held together with a hairband. The reason why it has to be waterproof is because I know that that shower only felt like five minutes, but you've been in there for half an hour, babe. Ow! Jump gear! Another form of time blindness can be long term. I frequently commit to plans that are three weeks away that I had no business agreeing to. I already had somewhere to be that day. Most people with ADHD can't even comprehend that they exist past tomorrow. So here's what I need you to do. You are going to do a monthly plan and you are going to do your level best to update it every day. My personal favourite way to do this is with Google Calendar, so I'm going to link Danielle Collada's video on it because I used her system, it has changed my life, it's going to change yours. It's also going to help you to not forget important dates because as you're doing it every day, random things are going to pop up in your brain like, oh, my dad's birthday is 10 months away. I should probably set myself a couple of reminders. I always have three reminders on, one for a couple days before so I have time to order something online if I can or go into town and find something. And the other ones are for cards and for wishing them a happy birthday. Because it's not that you don't care about them, it's that you literally just forgot that you would exist today. Does that make sense? I'm sure it does, you know exactly what I mean. Again, no one taught you this, but it's gonna help. Next, we are going to be looking at your propensity to overshare and blurt things out in the middle of conversation. Picture this. An idea springs into your head in the middle of what could be quite a sensitive situation. You try your best to hold it in, but you want to say it so badly. You even know it's not the right time, so you hold it in. You fidget. You try so hard. But then you puke it up. You've messed up. You've said the wrong thing. The room goes silent. Your anxiety kicks in. And rejection sensitivity disorder takes the wheel. I want to reiterate what I said in my last video. You are amazing and do not deserve to be hiding who you are. But it can affect your ability to make friends and subsequently your mental health especially if you have no coping mechanisms for these situations. In my experience the best solution is just to explain in private to the relevant people that you still care about their opinions and that you didn't mean to bulldoze the conversation at all but sometimes you can't help it and you just need a little nudge when you're doing it and you're not aware. Just wait for the right moment when it comes up. Another thing you can do is just journal about anything that's been knocking around in your little pea brain so that it doesn't come bursting out later. You can use the ADHD superpower of out of sight, out of mind to your advantage. Now that it's all written down and analysed, you have something cohesive to add instead of appearing like a bulldozer in conversation, which can open you up to scrutiny and ultimately trigger your social anxiety 
ruining your night. At the end of the day, if it happens and you've said something that actually hurt somebody, and I want to stress that you have actually hurt them because if people are asking you to apologize for your enthusiasm and for you participating in conversations in a lively way, the way that you do, don't hang out with them. Don't do it. You can just apologize and move on. The longer you dwell on it, the more upset you're gonna be, the more awkward it becomes. And if those people are even worth your friendship, they'll understand. I'm just gonna quick fire now because I know you all are peeking for some dopamine, but if you could quickly hit that like button, it just helps other people find our community and it helps with the algorithm a little bit. Right, ready, let's go. You never respond to texts. Have 20 minutes a day where you just go onto all of your social media and answer all of your texts. I like to do this before dinner because then I'm not dwelling on what people have said before I go to sleep. Obviously, if you have the energy, just do it throughout the day so you don't forget, but a lot of us don't and you can end up getting pretty burnt out. Rejection sensitivity is a massive topic and I will be covering that in depth in another video. But for now, I just wanna give you the advice to maybe look into some inner child work. Rejection sensitivity disorder comes from frequent messaging throughout our lives that we are somehow an inconvenience or should feel shame for the way that we are. You do not deserve to be criticized for the way that you are. And inner child work might seem a bit unrelated, but personally, I found it's the way forward for me. Being a bad listener. This one's a little bit tricky because you can be looking someone dead in the eye and be thinking, like, stop stealing my test I'm listening. It's I'm focused and her breath kind of smells like cheese. Oh, now I can't have mac and cheese tonight because it'll remind me of this conversation. Like, no one else is such a good active listener like Oh my God, what was she talking about? What we're going to do is get a fidget toy or I prefer a claw clip because you can play with it anywhere and it just looks like you're cooler than other people because you're snapping that thing around. Or I might just be really annoying and not know it. But this is gonna help you focus, especially if you lean more inattentive like I do. If there's anything you think I missed or you have any personal advice, please put it in the comments below because someone else might need it. Everyone's ADHD is different and if we help each other out, we might find a solution that works for each of us. Okay, last thing, you've made it this far. Now I'm going to shower you with compliments about why being ADHD makes you a really good friend. We are so funny. I bet you're the funny friend who always has something witty to say because Gilmore Girls or The Office is your comfort show and you have an arsenal of quotes ready to go at the right moment. No one knows that you stole your sense of humor. Don't worry about it. Your endless hyperfocuses. You could have in-depth conversations about all the drama that happened on Book Talk three months ago because at the time, you were riddled with this need to read as much as possible. You just had to have one of those bookshelves with, you know, the slidey ladders. You know what I'm talking about. You can recommend a book for any situation and you show how much you care about your friends by doing that. You're even more interesting because three months before that, your hyperfocus was painted. You could help all of your friends learn or even give them all of your old stuff because you lost interest anyway when you started buying all the books. And who doesn't want a friend like that? You are highly empathetic and have an amazing long-term working memory. Let's say your best friend Bethany had a boyfriend when she was like 12, which is a bit young to have a boyfriend, but it's hypothetical. He broke up with her, called her stupid, and then started dating one of her friends. Fast forward eight years, and she's crying to you about how she feels stupid all the time. Now, you have amazing pattern recognition, so you could pick out all the people she brings into her life to affirm those feelings of stupidity, even including the guy she doesn't even remember dating when she was 12 years old. You have a unique perspective that your friends should feel lucky to have around. So this was longer than usual, but I wanted to give you some real insights into your brain and why you might really struggle to maintain friendships. I know I needed this video when I was younger because no one gives you actual tangible advice that doesn't make the ADHD brain want to crash, burn, and delete all files. I talk about ADHD and travel here, so if you wanna come on my adventures while also upgrading your life a little bit, hit subscribe. I appreciate you and your brain. I'll see you wherever I end up next.